Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Mitch again, my regular Friday update, except today it's not live. I had to tape this early. I got all kind of meetings scheduled, so I was unable to do a live broadcast. So if you get this, just realize it's this being taped, and I'm just glad that you're giving me a little bit of time. Having said that, uh, let me just jump right into it. You know, we're in the middle of a battle. I believe the battle for the soul of our nation. I believe that we have issues that we have to consider as believers things that God wants us to do. And, and I'm here just to declare to you again, the Lord wants you to prosper. The Lord wants you to be in health. The Lord wants your soul to prosper. The Lord wants everything you touch to prosper. Think about that. Everything you touch, God wants it to prosper. So having said that, I'm here this uh, afternoon just to give you a few thoughts that I've found some verses that just spoke to my heart. Uh, they're found in Psalms 92, Psalms 92. And they just had some incredible thoughts about it. One, he says, I'm going to sing praises to the Lord. He goes on to say uh, in verse one, he says, God, it's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name almost high, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Wow, what an incredible privilege you and I have to give thanks to God, to praise him, worship in the morning and at night. But it gets even better. It goes on through a lot of long list of things. He says, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. Verse 4, you've made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Oh, Lord, how great are your works. What an incredible, incredible joy to know that we're partnering with the Lord. But I'm going to get to the good part because this is going to apply to us. I've got just a few thoughts that I think will really help us this afternoon. This is in verse 12. Psalms 92, verse 12 says this. Listen to this. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, maybe that doesn't mean much to you, but back in the Middle East where they have like a lot of arid places to be a cedar was huge. Those trees grow up to 130 feet. They spread out. They're massive. I and mean, when it says you're going to be like a cedar, the Lord is saying to you and I, that he wants us not to be tumbleweeds to get tossed by every wind and wave of doctrine, not to be moved by every circumstance in our culture, but you and I are called to be like cedars of Lebanon, huge, massive, massive trees that throw out a huge shade, and they were used for all kinds of forts. They were used in all kinds of defense systems. Uh, they were used to help build Solomon's temple. I could go on with all the things. So when God says this, he says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He'll grow like a cedar in Lebanon. It's talking about the righteous. Listen to this. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. God wants you to flourish. Now here's what goes on. This applies to me. Maybe some of you are a lot younger. This doesn't apply to, but this word ministers to me. It says, they shall still bear fruit in old age. Whoa, isn't that cool? In old age, you're still going to bear fruit. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Now, here's what I'm trying to get to. Don't let the distractions of our culture dissuade you from what God has for you. That was Pastor McCauley giving me an amen on that. But this is, don't let the distractions of our culture dissuade you from what the purpose is God's called you to do. God has called you and I, if lovers and followers of Jesus, the Spirit of God's living on the inside of us, we are called to be witnesses. If you heard Pastor McConaughey when he's talking about on Wednesday nights about the book of Acts, I mean the passion that just came out in every circumstance, every situation, these guys were committed to one thing. What was that? to share the gospel. I mean, it just came out where they were in jail, where they were being persecuted, where they were being maligned, where they were being accused of being riots in city squares, where they went to the synagogue, where they went into homes, where they went in the marketplace, wherever they went, they had a passion. It was just like single dog mindedness. Just, Jesus is risen from the dead. You need to discover him. He'll forgive you for your sins. You can have eternal life with him and you can know God and why you were created. I mean, what an incredible joy you and I have. And the Bible says, you and I and old age even are going to flourish like the cedars of Lebanon that we're going to see God do these amazing things. And I'm here just to encourage you this afternoon. Believe God. Believe God. And I would encourage you to pray in tongues. I pray in tongues all the time. I'm just telling you right now, it has just become just routine for me to spend throughout my day just lots and lots of time just, just praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, praying for my family, praying for my kids, praying for my grandkids, praying for my church, praying for our church leaders, praying for people. I just pray, 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 pray all the time. 
but I found out that it energizes me, that it keeps me above the circumstances. Because you know, if you got the media influencing you, you got to put a shield of faith. I had some good friends tell me, said, you know, Pastor Mitch, we can't even watch the news because it just bombards us. It just overwhelms us with all the negativism, all the stuff going on. It's almost like you got to put a shield of faith up around you. If you watch the news, kind of peep up over the shield to see the news because all the stuff that's coming at you, they just, they set you up for a lot of stuff that I'm, my opinion is not true, whether it's conservative or liberal. I'm just trying to say, as one person said, I don't remember who said it. They said, I want to feed on manna, not on the media. So let that be our goal. Let's feed on man and not on the media. So as we feed on the word of God, God wants me to be like a cedar of Lebanon. God wants you and I to be like we're flourishing in our old age and we're going to still bear fruit. What does it mean to bear fruit? It means that you and I are going to win people to Jesus. You and I are going to cause people to want to follow Christ. You and I, you and me, us, have the opportunity to see God do some amazing things through our lives. So I'm going to tell you one quick story and we'll close and I'm going to pray for you. But here's what I uh, had. We just walk around just talking to people. I met in a business meeting with these two people, and they are talking about they're trying to book some events here in our, in our C3 Dome complex. And I just at the end just said, you know what? We're praying for the prosperity of our community. We're praying for God to bless them. We're praying for God to use them. We're praying for God that he would just minister uh, all across our community. And so we've had all these bad news come up, some things going on, you know, Penn State football got canceled. Can you believe that? It's unbelievable, the political football that's being kicked around here on this COVID thing. But my point is, is our community is adversely affected by decisions. And so we have to stand in the gap as believers and pray and speak God's blessings over our community. We have to speak for our small businesses. We have to speak over our individual entrepreneurs. We have to speak to the people who are working in corporate life and all the big, massive 21,000 employees that work at Penn State University to believe that God will protect them and guide them that they can get their next job. So my point in saying this is that you and I have the opportunity to speak God's word. And so we have the opportunity to declare it. So any chance I get, I tell people, I'm going to be praying for you, praying for this situation. God's moving. God's doing some amazing things. So today, this happened just today. I just had a chance just to talk to this sweet, wonderful little girl. She was uh, doing this family business, working on some things. And she just began to open up and just share about her life. And it was unbelievable, the stuff she's been through. She's been raising herself like since she was 16 years of age. You know, and it's just such a brokenness in our culture. And just begin to share about what God is and just the whole thing of his, of his purpose. And it's like every chance you get, I'm just here to encourage you, we have to give people hope. You know, when you know Jesus, you're going to have hope. When you know Jesus, you're going to be able to share. And there's something about sharing your faith. So here I am, even in my old age, just believing God that he is going to use my life to influence others to want to follow Jesus. And I want to pray that for you, and I want to pray it for you and speak for you. So when you get this and you watch this and you read this, let's just receive it. Say, God has commanded me. God has commanded me that I'm to flourish like a cedar of Lebanon. God's told me that even in my old age, I'm going to bear fruit. God's told me as I worship him for his faithfulness, I talk about his righteousness. God does amazing things. Let's look for those divine opportunities. Let's look for those divine moments where we're going to be able to share. Now, don't forget... This Sunday, we got two services, an outdoor service at uh, 930, and we got a special treat for you. we got a special thing, Appeal to Heaven flag. I'm, gonna just, I'm so excited. We're, we are now an official Appeal to Heaven church. How about that? We're appealing to heaven, and we're going to do some incredible stuff. Second service, Pastor Dina will be speaking. It's going to be amazing, all the things she's got lined up. We're going to be having prayer. It's going to be joyful. I'm just telling you, you don't want to miss. So it's 930 Sunday, 11 o'clock. Second service will be online. But then comes the big thing. This is so huge. I can't. I just can't have enough time to please share this video, share this, hit like, and share the views and all this, and get the word out. Uh, on Thursday night, August twentieth, Encounter Twenty Twenty is happening. Encounter Twenty Twenty starts at six thirty out by Pennsylvania Furnace, a small community outside of State College. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be three nights. Don't wait till the last night. Come the first night. Get there early. Bring your chair. Be ready. We got praise and worship. We got fantastic testimonies. We got an incredible speaker. You're going to miss Jim Bucci and all the crew. It's going to be amazing. People are coming to be healed, be saved, be delivered, be baptized. Guys, I'm just telling you, this is just this is the thing you don't want to miss. Don't let it be that you hear about it later on and say, "Man, I wish I'd gone." Make a commitment. Thursday, August the twentieth. 6.30, get there early, 
we'll give you the address, contact the church or contact someone else and we'll just be there to, to steer you, but we'll give you the address, tell you where to come, bring your own chair. It's going to be outdoors. You don't have to worry about COVID and all that other stuff. God is up to something and there's a hunger. People want to know more about the things of God. So don't miss out. Okay, let me pray for you. Father, I pray for the ones listening. I pray, God, that you would speak to them, minister to them. Father, I pray that you would just pour through us your goodness. God, I pray that you'd make every follower of you to be like a cedar of Lebanon. 130 feet high, huge branches. God, let us be used just to build your kingdom in our generation. So, Father, we again declare that everything we touch will prosper. We again declare that, God, that what we do everywhere the sole of our feet treads upon, it's our land. And, Father, I pray for divine opportunities. Agree with me now. Agree with me. I believe for divine opportunities to share my faith, how Jesus has changed my life with those around me. God, give me eyes to see and ears to hear, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. See you Sunday. Bye-bye.